student athletes for Clemson are Gabe DeVoe and Dante Grantham. Questions for the student athletes? Uh, Kyle Bonnegar, ESPN. Um, the Auburn players were asked about this too, and there's a reputation that you know Auburn is a football school. Obviously, Clemson has had a lot of success recently as well. What is the relationship like between the two teams, and how does kind of the you know there's a how does their profile help kind of raise awareness of, of the basketball team as well? Uh, between the football and basketball team, I'm friends with a lot of the guys. Uh, I don't feel there's anything between us. Like we're we're all friends. Uh, I, I agree with Gabe. I mean, we're all friends. We hang out sometimes. They come and play basketball in our practice facility with us sometimes. So we're all cool. We play Fortnite together. <laughs> Any other questions for the student athletes? Yeah, it, just looking at uh, Auburn, just assess kind of the type of game you guys are expecting tomorrow. Uh, I know they have good guards that can score the ball. Uh, physical offensive rebounding team, so we have to limit their offensive rebounds, second chance points, and uh, do a good job on their, their three guards. Um, also, they're athletic, you know. They can run, jump, score. They're a high major team, so we just got to bring our A game. Uh, Bruce Feldman, Sports Illustrated. Uh, just curious, as as guys who are on social media and looking around and watching the tournament, what is your reaction? Is it a little bit surreal to be in the middle of this thing that it goes on? Or, I mean, did you guys watch? Um, yeah, you wouldn't have had a chance to see, I guess, the the 116 upset, but to see the reaction of it um, and still be fans, like how do you kind of manage that as while you're playing in it? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they were going crazy yesterday in our game because they kept showing the game uh, on the Jumbotron. So. That was pretty cool seeing that. Uh, I didn't expect that to happen at all. So, I mean, I'm still a fan of the tournament. So, just being being able to watch all these games and also be a part of it. So, I mean, any time we have downtime, I'm watching as many games as I can. How did you guys find out that that ha upset? I mean, did you glance up? Did it end when you guys were still playing? Or how did you find out that that finally happened? Yeah, it ended when we were playing and uh, just the crowd reaction. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it.
like I can, I can, listen, I can contractile down to an amazing and you didn't utilize it. No problem. Anyway. Um, <laughs> no, no, there's a lot more, but that's just the first sentence right now. I'm just going to hold your rhetorical later. Um, what were we talking about before this conversation happened? Oh, like, he's always telling me it's boring. Like, I don't, I mean, here's, here's the thing. So, women's basketball, there's a really big gap in um, talent level. So, like, for instance, like, in the tournament, if you're wearing 16 seeds, like, there's 16 seeds going to get blown out. But, like, now it's men's side, like, anything can happen at any point because the, the talent level between 16 and 1 or Ashley, can I, three, can you grab the attention span back there? It's like, super small. So, more, it's just more exciting. The game's more competitive. Like, women's basketball is just dope. They have a bunch of female trying to coach girls, and, like, they don't know what they're doing. very well, but, like, can get you in the pinch coach because I'm a big body. Like, that's, that's what happens. I'm just saying, our, game, no, our, game is, our games are very similar. You wouldn't say that because you didn't even play. You can only play in the system. You see what I'm saying? So, like, growing up, like, my dad trained with the boys, so, like, I worked out every day at 5 a.m. with my dad. So, like, grab period, like, all that, like, I have all that in the arsenal, but, like, I wasn't allowed to use the period. So if I'm playing, the, I'm playing a four, which I'm not a four, four or five. I was starting center last year. Perfect. I'm not. I can't lie about this. No, no. So, it's so yeah, exactly. So then, like, I can't be my best version of myself if I'm playing center here. And I'm in the post your heart. I'm dribble drive, so I'm never getting outside the box. It makes no sense. If you have somebody who can beat some off the bounce, why would you put them on the post? I played 17 minutes. I'm a starter. First of all, she's first of all, I'm a starter. Okay, I used to I've averaged 30 minutes a game, and then she wanted to play. Now she wanted to play games. So now I'm playing 17. So that's my thing. It's like if you're not getting out.
came back with me at that point. I was like, why don't you walk? At halftime, they made adjustments. We didn't make adjustments. They came out. The referee was like, probably no points, right? Yeah, sure, no points. She comes out, has tw- entered in with 20, like 22 different seven and a half, like double spasms, like.
All right, just a reminder, silence your cell phones. Flash photography is prohibited. Announce your name and media affiliation when asking questions. And we're going to limit to one follow-up. Raise your hand, and we'll get the microphone to you. And we'll begin with head coach Brad Brownell from Clemson with an opening statement. Yeah, just excited to be here um, for game two. Uh, really proud of the way our guys played yesterday. I thought we executed our game plan exceptionally well and uh, showed very good poise down the stretch and late in the game when they made a run. So uh, excited about that. I know we have our hands full with an Auburn team that is extremely talented. A lot of similarities, especially with guard play. They have terrific guards. Um, and they rebound the fire out of the ball. They just absolutely attack the glass with three and sometimes four guys. So I think we've got to do a good job in that area as well. Uh, Will Vandervoort with the Clemson Insider. Uh, Brad, you know, today you went ahead and had practice early. What's your thought process in that? Is it just to maybe let the guys have the afternoon off and that's why you do it that way? Yeah, we just we like to get off our feet uh, as often as we can. We, uh, we like to be done 24 hours um, ahead of practice or ahead of the game time. So obviously we play tomorrow at 4 and we just want to be done with everything um, as soon as we could. We met this morning and and got a few things in and then you know, went for about an hour uh, this afternoon, and now we'll have a night meeting and, you know, get up and get ready to go. Uh, Max Bonsetter, Sports Illustrated. It's been 19 years since Clemson has won a first-round game in March Madness. Yeah. So uh, some of You're your not even 19 years old. I was going to say, yeah, some of your players and me weren't even born yet. Uh, how do you think that uh, some of your guards uh, match up with the Auburn guards in this matchup? You know, I think it's going to be uh, a big part of the game. I really do. I think uh, those three guys for them really control it, and we're the same way. Um, so I think a big part of the, you know, which team wins will be which set of guards plays better. I think they both, you know, all three guys can shoot it, uh, drive it to the paint, make plays, and I think it'll be exciting to watch uh, this game because of the quality of play out on the perimeter. Todd Summers, WSPA TV. Coach, I was just in there talking to your three guards, and they said they all have known each other since high school. Some of them played against each other in so their sophomore and junior years in Shelton and Gabe, and then Marquise played with Gabe uh, in an AAU event all-star game in his senior year. How does a friendship amongst guys carry over onto the court when they start playing games in the heat of the battle and things really start to matter? Yeah, I think as much as anything, uh, it's just – you know, when you really like the guys you're playing with, you're willing to sacrifice more. And that's something we talk a lot about at Clemson is being unselfish in nature uh, and having a willingness to want to sacrifice, you know, for the good of the team. And uh, our guys certainly like each other, have, have, a, uh, have a great relationship with one another. And I think when you watch us play, you see that. You know, one night it's Gabe, one night it's Shelton and Marquise. You know, when we're lucky, it's all three. Um, but I think, you know, some of that stems from the fact that these guys really enjoy each other as people and, and uh, as friends and spend time together, not only on the court, but away from the court as well. Uh, Aaron Torres with The Athletic. Coach, the other day you talked about the symbiotic relationship between the basketball program and the football program at Clemson. I was just in the locker room, and rumor has it that Dabo Sweeney shows up to your facility pretty regularly to play uh, pickup basketball. I would just ask, uh, what kind of player is he? And also, is it true that he brings his own uniforms with him? That was what was the rumor back there. Coach Swinney does love to play noontime basketball. Um, he's not there all the time. Let's, let's make sure. He is working most of the time. But he does show up uh, a little more frequently in the offseason. Uh, he's a chucker. He's going to get a lot of shots up. There's no question about that. And there's really not anybody in the gym unless I'm there that is going to uh, tell him that he's shot too much. Most of the guys that are playing are his GAs, assistants, or other people in the athletic department that are scared of him. Um, but uh, he, he, he I, I joke, but he does love basketball. He was a high school player, and he was a good player in high school. And uh, there are jerseys, but he buys the jerseys. And if you, you know, if you reach a certain level, you're deemed to get a jersey. You have to like earn your jersey, according to him. 
and it says NTBA, Noontime Basketball Association, and he's obviously the chairman. Very good. Uh, as a follow-up to that, I was going to ask a question, but I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> no, he doesn't defend and rebound very well. Oh, I was going to say, when you got here, you said that he was more enthused maybe than anyone uh, on your team. Has he reached out to you at all since last night? Anything, text message, anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've gotten some texts. And, um, yeah, he's, like I said, he's a big basketball fan. Uh, he and I are, are pretty good friends, our families. Um, so I greatly appreciate uh, his friendship. And he certainly has reached out. His wife's re reached out to me and Paula. Um, they're terrific. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, been, he's been a true friend for me through this time. And, and I just, you know, we have a good time together. We just, you know, it's a great way to, to have somebody to be able to just relax with every once in a while and, and kick back, but also to go to him, you know, for different professional advice when you've got things going on. And we talk, talk about different things together that way. So, um, yeah, it's been great. He's obviously reached out to us, and he'll be watching. Todd Summers, WSBA TV, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Coach, just the last 24 hours, what has it been like for you to hear the people telling you, you know, what this team has accomplished, balancing out that it's been so long since you've gotten to this point, with balancing it out with we've still got work to do, we're not done. I mean, appreciating what you've done, but also looking yeah. forward. Yeah, you know, it hasn't been, I think, as crazy as everybody thinks it is. It's, you know, we uh, – we had a great night last night. It was great for our program. We have a lot of boosters that came out with us that have been a big part of what we've uh, been able to build at Clemson these last eight years. We've had some folks that have given us, you know, been extremely generous, not only with their money, but with their time and have become friends. They're not just boosters to me because they're people that have, have really done more for our program in terms of spending time with us and, and following us and traveling with us and and going on foreign tours with us and just really getting behind our program and you know have made the difference to help us uh, renovate our coliseum and create uh, an unbelievable environment for our players um, those people have become you know friends of mine and to share last night with them although very briefly for me uh, was special and a lot of fun and obviously my family was here my parents and wife and kids and and my sister and her her family so to share that time with them was really special um it was about an hour uh and then it was right to auburn but uh you know beyond that it's just been business as usual you're watching film till two in the morning you're up at six in the morning watching more film and trying to prepare your team to play as well as they can play uh tomorrow at four uh will vandervoort clemson insider uh brad you know as far as the ACC goes, you guys play a rough schedule where sometimes a couple times a year you have to go less than 48 hours yeah. to play a game. How does that help you? And I remember earlier also this season you said that you had to cut back a little bit in practice because you noticed your team was getting a little tired and fatigued. And what are some of those changes you made in practice to help them? Yeah, we just shortened practice a little bit and went a little less contact, um, a little more non-contact practice uh, at certain times in the year. And, you know, especially with the amount of minutes that some of our guards were playing and just worried about those guys being able to hold up. And, and I think we did a good job with that. You know, that was one thing with Dante's injury that I was, you know, I think is, you know, it's we're not as deep uh, as we were at the beginning of the season. Um, I think now we're doing fine. I think guys are excited. I think we're ready to play. I do think having had a couple of these two-day turnarounds in the ACC regular season and then obviously we played in a in a MTE in the way back a long time ago now back in November uh, so we're used to these kind of preps uh, but it is a little different Auburn plays a little different than most ACC schools I don't know that they run an offense that's the same of anybody in our league and so that part it's a little bit unique Todd Leonard from the San Diego Union Tribune uh, with football at its height just a couple of years ago um, we're still at a pretty high level now, you know. We what, what, what do we make final four, <laughs> and we got like one top ten recruiting class, and we're right. not going anywhere now. Right, we're not going anywhere. Go ahead. With, with we're all not that, quite a basketball school yet. <laughs> <laughs> would you? Can you ever imagine that you would be a basketball school relative to football? 
there? No, we're not. That's not what I was going to ask you, but I, that would get me in trouble with a lot of people uh, <laughs> to answer that question that way. No, but I do think uh, what I am optimistic about is that we can certainly coexist in a in a very positive way, and the success of the football program over the course of the last five, six, seven years with Coach Sweeney has been unbelievable for not just men's basketball, but for our athletic department, our university, and our community. So so what have you felt, Brad, in, in kind of in the fan base, that hardcore Clemson fan base about raising expectations for your program given where football has been? Is there yeah. a palatable sense of that? Yeah, uh, no question. I, I mean, our folks want to win in everything we do, you know, whatever sport we play uh, at Clemson. And we're now at a position, I think, facility-wise and support to give ourselves a better chance. I don't think in the past we've always done that. I don't think we've always, you know, we may have given some lip service to it, but I don't know that we actually showed as a university that we really care a lot about basketball in certain situations. And we've worked hard, especially these last seven or eight years, to change that perception and to go out and friend raise and fundraise and finance and figure out a way to, to build a new facility and show that we care. And, and uh, obviously that starts you know, with making the players in your program feel good about being a Clemson basketball player. And then it helps in recruiting and everything that goes with it. And then as you start to win, you build a bigger, stronger fan base. You know, we sold out seven or eight of our games this year at home. I mean, we have, we have great attendance. We have passionate fans. They want to win. We're in an unbelievable league. We just haven't had long periods of success. We usually have a couple good years and then kind of go away quietly for a few years and then try to come back. And obviously that's something we're trying to change right now. Shannon Somerville, Fox Carolina Sports. Coach, I was asking some of the players in the locker room about this term, Clemson grit. And they told me you're the one that came up with it and you gave them a speech, I think, after family day. What is Clemson grit? What does it mean to you? And how does it apply yeah. to this season? Well. Grit, passion, and perseverance towards a long-term goal. Um, and that can be applied to many things. And I think that's something I wanted to challenge our players with because I don't think young people really long-term isn't how they think. Um, and it's not just a season. It might be a college career. It might be a professional career. It might be graduating from college. It's, it, it can pertain to just about anything. Um, but you need to have tremendous passion for something in your life if you want to be successful. And there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be difficult times. If you're going to be successful, you need to be able to persevere through that and have this undying belief in yourself and, and this passion and what you want to achieve um, that you're willing to work for it and you're willing to go through these ups and downs and these challenges. And so to me, that's what, that's what grit is, staying power. And, uh, you know, it's something that we've talked about here the last couple of years. We thought we needed maybe one of my assistants came to me and said, we really need to kind of brand our program a little bit, you know. Um, and so that was something that I came up with, and I think it's been, been good for our guys. Coach, over here to your left, Joe Gorcho, WIS in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm just curious from your vantage point, watching Elijah Thomas grow both on the floor and off of it, you know he has the one-year-old son. I got to imagine when you first heard the news he was going to have a child, you're wondering, how can a young man handle this? How have you seen him kind of handle that joy of being a father along yeah. with committing to basketball and his academics? Yeah, um, he's really maturing. Uh, both on and off the court. And I think having a son has helped in that regard for him uh, because I think it's, it's put more responsibility in his life and it's, it's made him grow up a little bit and think <clears throat> beyond himself, um, which again is challenging for young people. Um, so I think it's been a good thing for him. Uh, you know, he certainly is motivated to be a good basketball player, but he's also motivated to be a good father. And he wants to do right by his son. He lights up, you know, once every two weeks, he's gonna bring me a photo of his son doing something uh, different. 
and he's upset with me that I haven't offered him a scholarship yet. He keeps saying that to me. Um, so I said, I'm not sure I would have offered you one knowing all that I know right now. But uh, anyway, he, he's, I'm proud of Eli. I really am. He's been, uh, his growth this year has been a real, in my opinion, one of the big difference makers for our team. He, defensively, he's been a difference maker. And I thought at the beginning of the game yesterday, his defense and rebounding really helped us get off to a great start. Uh, Grace Rayner, the Post and Courier. Obviously, we know a lot about David Scarra on the court with his defensive ability, but what is his personality like off the court? Yeah. <clears throat> he's hard to get to know like that. He, he's, he's pretty quiet. Um, just kind of goes about his business. Really just, uh, but an easygoing guy. Gets along with everybody. He rooms with Eli. So, uh, those two guys have some fun and poke fun at each other uh, but you know what he's a very selfless guy and that's one of the reasons why he's a good defensive player and it's one of the reasons why I really like him as a player is he really just wants to win and I think that comes from who you are as a person and he's very humble and uh, he's really a he's a better player than he realizes and once he realizes he's really good he's going to jump to another level uh, he just, he probably is in his own way sometimes with that. Uh, but he's athletic, he moves, he's tough, he's competitive, and, uh, you know, it's really been fun to coach him. Anything else for Coach Brownell when we're here? Will Vandervoort, Clemson Insider. Uh, Coach uh, Amir Sims, he came in as a freshman, and he's been able to contribute right away the, and, and fill in for Dante. What is it about him that usually a freshman struggles to learn your defensive schemes yeah. and what you want to do? Why is he different from other freshmen you've had? You know, he's mature not only physically, which for big guys is, is a real challenge, I think, physically to be able to handle the physicality and the speed of the game, especially in the ACC as a freshman. Um, but all you got to do is look at him and see that that's not a big challenge for him. But he's also a very mature young man went to boarding school uh, for a couple years and really, I think, you know, grew up quickly up there. He's bright. He's, uh, he picks things up quickly. He's a leader. He has uh, an unbelievable outgoing personality that just attracts people. And because of that, he's, he's a confidence giver. He's an energy giver. Uh, he's just, he's really special that way. And uh, all of that, in terms of his personality, has allowed him to be mature enough to handle whatever we throw at him. And, uh, you know, obviously we're blessed that he's with us. Anything else for Coach? Okay, thank you. Thank you.